Hey everyone, it's JC. I'm here with a thought that I hope is comforting and helpful because I know how difficult the food journey is. And if you have found my channel and you're wondering what it looks like to take a faith-based approach and you're wondering if it'll work, if it'll be any different after decades or years of failed diets, here's my message today. And it's a simple one, but I think it's a big enough one that it can completely derail, derail us as we start this journey. It, the key is having the ability to make the choice to believe that Jesus Christ can bring about a different result than all the failures that we've had in the past. That, the past. that he really, truly has the power to heal us in this area. That he does. Here's, I think, what the biggest problem is. So many of us, and if you're like me, I didn't just have a few failed diets. I had almost 20 years of failure in this area. Of so many Monday mornings and January 1st and, and times where I promised myself, promised myself and promised God that I was done, that it was going to be different. And sometimes I'd last a few days. Sometimes I would last a few hours. And the shame of that and the sense of that enormity of that failure. So many failures. It just can sit like a weight on your shoulders. And so as I begin talking in this channel, or as you begin thinking about taking a faith-based approach, I mean, the enemy's biggest weapon is to say, you know, so many failures. You think this is going to be different? You've, you've failed too many times. It's too hard. It's too hard. You can't do it. I don't care if he helps you. You are a failure in this area or you are too weak in this area. And he just parades those years of failure before our mind, right? So many times we've tried. Let me suggest one verse to repeat in your mind over and over. Shout it at the enemy if you need to, as you begin this process, or even if you're farther down the road in this process, and this is the thing that keeps coming back. Um, Isaiah 43, verses 18 and 19. In the King James, eight, verse 18 says, remember not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Other translations, forget what happened before. Don't keep going over old history, the message says, or the NIV. Don't dwell on the past. Forget what happened before. You take all those failures and you set them aside. You literally, because Christ says in verse, in verse 19 through the prophet Isaiah, I'm going to do a new thing. This is new. This is not like all your other diets and your white knuckle willpower. This is a new thing and it's going to look different. In fact, he says, I'm going to even make a way in the wilderness and water in the rivers in the desert. It has been a wilderness. Yes, it has been dry and barren and unfruitful in your life. You have not been able to see victory in this area of your life, perhaps like me for many, many, many years. But he says, no, don't think about those failures. I'm doing something new here. I'm doing something new here. It's going to be so dramatic. It'll be like a river flowing in the middle of the biggest, hottest desert. It's going to be new and it will be fruitful and you will find healing. But don't let those old things crowd out your ability to believe. It's a choice saying, nope, I'm not going to dwell on the past. This is different. This isn't another diet. This isn't another willpower moment that's going to fade after a few hours. This time I'm relying on the power of Jesus Christ. The other thing, the other point that I want to kind of leave there for you to ponder is the idea that as we get started, and I've heard this so many times from people, emails, in person, I felt it myself, as we get started in a faith-based approach and we say, okay, I'm going to trust him this time. I'm going to trust him. I'm not going to do the old ways. I am going to trust him. And then suddenly it's messy. <laughs> like We're like, okay, I'm trusting him. Off we go and then down we go or we may binge or we may have a bad day and we're like, wait, wait, <laughs> I, <laughs> this was supposed to be, he's helping me. And I think there's this expectation that once we surrender this, 
that it's just going to be linear. Like I'm just going to get better and better and better. And it's going to be great. And his power is here. And there's going to be no issues. <laughs> I'm here to validate that it's messy. What he is doing with us in this journey is not just dieting and helping us lose weight. That's not what this is about. This is about transforming our mind when it comes to food, completely reworking and rewiring our entire thought process, our whole approach to food in our life. That is messy. It's going to be messy and it's okay. It doesn't mean he's not in the process, right? Um, I was thinking of in order to fight, to hold on to belief as it's a little bit messy. I was thinking of the verse in Mark 9 where the father whose, whose child is possessed and no one has been able to help comes to Jesus and says, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. Like I believe, but I'm trembling. I Help me because the unbelief is right there knocking on the door, right? That's what we're talking about in this video. I, I found a quote. Oh, I think I can do this without my glasses. I found a quote from author Pete Enns, E-N-N-S, in his book, The Sin of Certainty, where he was talking about Mark 9. And he, he described it in a way I thought, that is the food journey, food journey. That's what it looks like. After quoting that verse, Lord, I believe, help thou my, my unbelief. He says, of course, as we all know, this suffering father isn't saying, Jesus, I am um, operating on about an 85% degree of certainty that you're able to do this, but I'd like you to try to rev it up to 100%. He says, rather, as I think most any parent can understand, the father needs help letting go. The situation is out of his control. He needs to trust Jesus with his son. The man says in effect, listen to this. Yes, I trust you. I'm trying at least. I want to. I'm scared. Help me trust you. To me, that's what the faith-based process looks like. When we begin to tackle the different layers that are contributing to our food demons. For many of us, in fact, I would say for most of us, if you are coming out of generation or a, a generation where your parents carried this food trauma, it was passed on to you, or if you've had it since you were a teenager, there are layers and layers. For me, it was not a simple, JC, just remove this one limiting belief and you'll be fine. There were layers upon layers of false beliefs when it came to my relationship with food. And so it felt a lot like, <laughs> like this. In fact, let's put, let's put the food journey into that same, um, the situation is out of control, right? We need to trust Jesus with our diets. Then we say in effect, yes, I trust you. I'm trying at least. I want to. I'm scared. Help me trust you. Um, if it's messy, that's okay. Because when you're dealing with transforming a mind, of course it's going to be messy. I would have days that I would do so good and feel so free. And then the other days where I was battling the enemy and I didn't right have all the tools yet and I was just learning them. Yes, I would go and binge. And yes, I would have days that I would fail and the Lord would be right there with his hand going, nope, stand up, stand up. It's like learning to sword fight, right? It's like learning to be a warrior. In the early days, you're just learning to use new weapons. <laughs> and Satan would come at me sometimes and sometimes he would take me down. But as I clung to the Lord's hand and said, no, I want to learn this. I want to be new. I want to believe there will be rivers in the desert. <laughs> that new thing happened. But the challenge to our faith is that if we think it's just going to be poof, I'm trusting him now. It's all going to be beautiful. Then when it isn't, down we'll go. It's choosing to believe whatever this process looks like and whatever he needs to take me through as I learn how to see food in a new way. I'm just going to trust him. It's not in my control <laughs> and it's scary and it's messy, but that's okay. That's, that's, we're making rivers in the desert. We're going to begin to see new fruit pop up on our branch in ways we never dreamed. I hope that was helpful. It's a choice to trust him. It's a choice to have faith and believe and not dwell on the past, not expect it to be perfect, but just trust that whatever it looks like day to day, that we don't let go of his hand. We don't let it go of his hand. If you want more resources to help you on this journey, I will put several 
in the description box below, especially my, my course help. Where do I start? If that's where you're, if you're at the beginning, that course could be really helpful. And I'll mention some other things that you can look at if you want to keep going on this path and really see true, real healing in this area of your life. Prayers for you and blessings as you learn this for yourself. Have a great week.